In this video, I want to go into one of the more powerful features in Nuke Studio, which is the ability to convert shots in our edit into Nuke comps. This allows us to perform more advanced compositing tasks than can be achieved just using soft effects alone, and have those propagate in the edit. So, we start that process by creating a, a comp container, uh, and this is a really straightforward process. We just select a clip designated for vis visual effects, and we choose create comp from the menu. So, I'm just I'm going to demonstrate that on, on this uh, on this shot here, this shot one. So with that selected, I'm just going to come to my menu and I'm going to say create comp. You can see I get a progress bar and we now get a comp created and I'll need to just scroll up the, uh, the timeline so you can see what's happened here. So essentially what's happened is it's added this new track to the timeline which is net labelled VFX1. Um, and you can see that it's added this new clip container to it. And because this clip sits above the other video layers in the stack, this becomes the dominant layer for this particular clip. Now the clip container is currently red. This means that the compo, the new script, has been created, but the contents have yet to be rendered. Okay. If we look at the project panel up here, we can see something quite revealing. Um, I'll just uh, I'll just pull this across so we can see it a little, a little bit better. You can see we've got a new bin here called VFX, and inside this bin are a couple of elements. This, which is a DPX sequence, which we can see is currently unrendered, and then this, which is the new comp, and we can see it's got the new script, and we can see it's got the .mk file extension there. So we've essentially created two elements when we created this uh, comp container. But we won't actually see any effects of, it, of any comp until we've actually rendered this, uh, this comp out and therefore actually made this, uh, made this DPX sequence actually meaningful. So let's take a look at the contents of the comp then. So all I need to do is just get my container and double click it and we can see something quite uh, quite interesting in here we can see that uh, that we've actually got the beginnings of a of a node graph so in the graph editor let's just take a look we've got these two backdrop nodes uh, one on the read side and one on the write side so if we look at the at the read side we can see that we've got a read node which is reading in the sequence uh, from the uh, from the timeline, and then we've got this uh, modify metadata node, which is uh, which is which is sat there in case we make any changes to our file, which needs to be converted into the into the metadata. And what we've also got is this grade node. Now, where did this come from? I think probably the easiest way to uh, to see this is to actually um, is to actually take a look at um, what I'm going to try and do is I'm just going to try and dock my timeline and my node graph side by side. So what this grade node is, is that it is, is basically it's the soft effect. So any soft effects that are applied to the clip, this would not apply to soft effects uh, that we saw further, further down here that were applied, uh, that were sequence wide. But any, um, any soft effects that have been actually applied to the clip, they get taken into the node graph. So effect, effectively that is the same as that. Okay. It's difficult. I'm going to have to close this, uh, this panel. I would like to keep kept it open, but I really do need the, uh, need the space uh, for, what I, for what I'm doing. In fact, I'm going to put this side by side so that we can... Um, so that we've got a little bit more horizontal space. So this is on the read side, and then this is on the write side. So what it's doing here is it's adding time code. Um, so any read time changes or anything like that we do during our compositing, which would take place here in the middle, uh, would get picked up by that, and any changes as a consequence of that um, would get reinterpreted in the in the metadata. Then we've got our write node, and our write node is essentially what, what creates this render here. And then we've just got our viewer so that we can actually see what we're doing. And then right at the bottom is a precom which just contains any annotations, again annotations that we've applied at clip level. Okay, so that is essentially how, uh, that's essentially what happens when we create a script.
or should I say, when we create a comp container in New Studio. Okay, so I'm just going to jump back to my to my timeline and just grow this out a little bit so that I can uh, see what I'm doing. Okay, so let's actually put this to the test. Uh, let me come across to one that is actually going to involve an effect of some sort. Okay, so here we go. So this is the um, this is actually going to involve some keying. So I'll use this to demonstrate how this would work as a composite uh, test, so we can see how this process works. So I'm going to select my green screen footage, and I'm going to come down to create comp. This has now created me a comp. So if I if I just go up to the top here, I can see this is my comp. I'll double click it, and we're inside. So that's pretty unsurprising, seeing as though we've seen that already. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a really, really rough and ready slack comp to uh, to demonstrate this process. So I'm just going to bung in a key light node. Just drop uh, drop the that into the source there, and then take that out to the to the top of the this right node here. Okay, so here's, here's my key key light sat in here. Um, I'll just create a really simple mask to act uh, as a garbage mat. Just um, just draw a container around my character. Just scrub through just to make sure he stays in those boundaries. Okay, so it does. I can actually bring that in a little bit further. Like so. Okay, so that's on the output mask, so I just need to uh, tell it to use that, uh, you, oops, invert, to, to, to use that data. And now I'm just going to do a really, really rough key. Okay, just going to the in this com compacted space to actually see this uh, to see what's going on in this space so for now I'll just up my uh, I'll just up my viewer directly to the uh, to the key light so I can see what's going on and obviously I can now sort of do some work on this uh, on this key maybe I can uh, just recite that a little bit and see if I can get rid of some of that uh, some of those sort of peaking areas there just get the clip back and take it up. Okay, as I say, I'm not looking to be too precise here. This is just just a slap comp. Um, let's uh, let's say that it's done at that. Okay, so I'll just come back out of the alpha channel, and now we'll get a background. So I'm going to put a merge on here, and we're going to be merging this over the top of the background. So I should be able to do so. Do that. And then hook, hook, up, hook the viewer up right to the bottom of this. Now this is a really cool thing: is that I can actually take, come to, come to my library here. You can see that uh, here's my native footage. I don't want anything from the green screen, but I do want the sort of the house still there from the background. And I can just select that, and I can just drag it straight into the comp. And now I can perform the composite. So I can stick that. Um, I can stick that there and then just bring the viewer now back into into that space there. Okay. So I think you'll agree that's a pretty rough and ready uh, slap comp, but nevertheless it should help us to uh, to see how this see this process in operation. So I'm just going to come up here now to file save comp. I could obviously have chosen Control S. And now come back to my timeline. So we can see back in the timeline that the comp's been created, and we know that the uh, the, the keying has been taken place in there. The slap comp exists. We've saved the file, but we're not yet seeing that on the uh, in the timeline. The reason for that is quite simple: it's because it isn't yet it hasn't yet been rendered. So again, if we come back into our VFX, we can see there's our there's our comp. 
and there is the DPX that the right node within that comp is looking to output but it's not yet rendered. Now the good thing about this is that we can actually do this directly in the uh, in the timeline. So we can just select our clip, we can right click and down just outside of the screen capture area is render comp which I can choose or I can just select it in F7 which is which does the same thing and you can see now what's, uh, what's taking place you can see there's actually a write process taking place and if I actually bring the playhead right to this area you can see that the area that's already been rendered so the frames of the DPX sequence that have already been rendered of which there are currently a few we can see that they are now appearing in the timeline and we can start to see the effects of our uh, of our render now obviously i do need to do some issues with the um, with the formatting in there because uh, the the, for the 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 format of the green screen footage is not matching our 1920 uh, by 1080 format in here hence the reason why it's all gone a little bit raged but uh, that's just something i could quickly go back to the comp and um, and put right Okay, I've just jumped uh, along a little bit because I think this would be a good time to look at render states a little bit more. We've already um, we've already seen um, the a couple of states already, but I just want to sort of focus on one more. So if I just sort of zoom in a little bit on this uh, this this part of the, part of the timeline, the changes I've made in here are completely arbitrary. Uh, it's just to demonstrate the point. So we've essentially got. Let's just focus on these three containers. Uh, and you notice that they've all got different colours. Okay, the maroon colour. We've already established this. This um, this tells us that the comp hasn't yet been rendered. Okay, this green colour over here. This tells us that the um, that the comp has been rendered, and um, and therefore what we're seeing in this uh, in this part of the timeline is the effects of that render. But what we've got over here is this olive green one, which um, which we don't yet. We, we don't yet we haven't fully yet explored okay what is this telling us it's actually telling us that the comps actually been rendered but it's currently out of sync so what do we mean by out of sync we mean that we've actually rendered the shot and saved the new comp but then we've actually gone back and undertaken some more work which hasn't yet been rendered so all we would need to do in this particular case would be to um, would again be to right click again this is outside of the screen capture area and choose uh, render comp and you'll see that this now sort of goes through and at the end I wish I'd not chosen quite such a long clip but at the end of this process this clip will then go green to tell us that it's now back in sync okay so let's take a look at um, at, at comp versions. This is a really important feature used a lot in professional pipelines. As a VFX artist it's normal to offer the creative lead, the director or the client a number of versions of the same shot. So I've got a, a comp here that I've just broken out, I haven't done anything yet with it so if we just discard that and just go into that you can see there's absolutely nothing nothing in that. So I'm just going to save that uh, comp um, and I'm going to create some versions from this. So at the moment um, there, I, I, I have no versions or should I say just the one version. I just type V there on the timeline and you can see that that's suggesting I've got one version. It's blacked out because it, it, there's nothing rendered yet in there. Okay. Now what I can do now is I can... Um, with this, um, with with this selected, I can come to. But I'll just open it up. I can come to File, and I can say Save a new comp version. Okay. Now this time I'm going to do something um, arbitrary to it. So I'll just stick to grade nodes, uh, just so that we can see different sort of effects. Um, and I'll um, I'll gain this right up and gamma it down. Create a really sort of hard hard gamma effect on that particular one okay so I'm just going to save that one so now I'm going to come back and I'm going to say save a new conversion so this is going to be the third one um, and I'm going to do something completely different with the colouring so I'll go back to my default and maybe just blow it out blow it out a little bit and maybe just do a little bit of a little bit of colour work on it Okay, something, something like that. Maybe just gain down a touch. 
and again save save that. So when we go back to our comp states now and I click on that and type V you can see now that I've actually got three versions of this as yet they're all blacked out but I can I can basically switch between these and have the effect change in real time on the timeline so for example if I choose my first one here I can now um, I can now right click on that but I'll do it the I'll do it the old school way and use keyboard shortcut what am I doing a bit of a brain fart there uh, so I'm using the V there selecting my first comp and now I can just right click on this now and render that comp and we can see this is rendering the unaffected version so this was the version that I saved before um, before I made any changes Okay, so that's now rendered. So if I type V now, you can see I've got one rendered version. I'm going to now jump up to Comp 2 or version 2 and just select that and render that comp. Again, when you're in this area that hasn't yet been uh, blessed by the by the bar, then you will get this message. But as soon as it's actually rendered those frames, and you can see this is the one with the gamma slam. Okay, and that's finished so now I can type V again and you can see I've now got two versions so I'm just going to switch over to the third seems like it's a fairly quick process and again just select that and render the comp I appreciate that the render comp option is disappearing off the screen capture area but uh, I'm sure if you're following along you'll get this and this is the one where I made the sort of greeny blue and slightly washed out uh, color, color change and when that finishes that will go green So we can see now we've got three versions. So we could easily now just um, we could now easily now just jump between these versions, and we're showing and we're showing the client the changes in real time. So very very powerful the features. Okay, so I think this is actually a good time to uh, to look at the um, at the export process here, just so that we can actually see what's going on. So I'm just going to, uh, while that's selected, I'm just going to come to the export option and bring up the export window um, and just stretch it out a little bit so we can see it in a bit more in a bit more detail. And now we can actually look at what's going on here. So we've seen this before earlier on in the series when we were looking at exporting the sequences, um, but in this particular game, so we were exporting sequences like that and we were working with the transcode options sort of codecs etc but when we're working with new scripts then we've got this uh, export preset which uh, or two export presets which are provided by Nuke Studio uh, one for a basic new shot and one for a new shot with annotations which it tends to default to particularly if the if it detects annotations within the project okay and this is a preset which is pre-populated with a whole bunch of um, uh, of paths each of which have got write out content okay so and this tells us a little bit about what's happening and we'll go to the operating system in a second and we'll see exactly what's happening because this will be this will be cluttering up the um, our really nice uh, project directory system and i want to show how we can actually address that so we can see here that it's creating um, it's creating well first export to it's defaulting to the project root so whatever it's creating in here now is um, is based on the project root folder so the path, the first start path is shot and you can see that's in angle brackets which is basically using the token and we can see shot if I just over if you look further down this is the name of the shot being processed so what that's going to do is that's going to append the name uh, of the um, of the shot being processed so we were working on uh, shot whatever it was just let me drag that out we were working on shot 10 so whatever that, that's going to be creating me a folder called shot 10 inside that folder it's going to be creating me a a subfolder called nuke and inside that folder it's going to be creating me three further subfolders one to store the scripts one to store renders 
a one to store annotations and we can see within the scripts themselves they are set to use the name of the shot, the comp, the name index, the version and then the file extension which is a new project file so it's an NK file extension and then we've got our renders so this is where it's saving our renders and again it's the same process it's 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 using the render tokens to define the uh, the, the shot name followed by comp and then the name index and the version and then the file extension which is currently set to four integers and it's and it's writing out a dpx 10 bit sequence so that's kind of a transcoding process but it's using the right node within the new script to do that and then we've got our annotations down here which is basically it's uh, it's taking those and it's applying those into the um, it's it's applying the the text file into the precomp and it's applying the um, it's it's actually wherever I've used the brush, then it's applying that um, as a as a as a DPX uh, sequence as well. Okay, this is a bit of a pain while I'm doing this, but I do need to hover over. Okay, so the other thing down here is what is what the uh, what's getting exported. So for example, when I'm in the renders. This is telling us what uh, what it's ex exporting. So it's ex exporting all the tracks. In this particular case, it won't be. It'll just be exporting the VFX sequence um, and um, and the video tracks. But I could equally just tell it to render all tracks, and it will just do those automatically. Uh, and then over here, we are telling the uh, we're telling it to cut to cut by the uh, by the cut length which is basically the length of each individual shot if it was the clip length it would render the entire sequence every time we did that which we don't want because that's obviously creating unduly large files so what this is doing is this is cutting the uh, the, the sequence just to the uh, just to the boundaries of the actual clips themselves except it's also including a further 12 frames on the head and on the tail of the clip which means that the editor, if the editor decided later on that they wanted to slide the clip, the, the the clip within the timeline back or forward just a tiny bit, then we've got a little bit of latency built into that, so that we could act, you know, so that the editor can actually slide the edit a little, little bit, and he's not going to reveal any uncomped areas. Um, we've also got start frame here, which is basically set to start the, each of the sequences at the naming of thousand and one and then just increment forwards from that particular point that's a pretty standard VFX convention and it just it just means that if the editor decides that he wants to sort of move the timeline back a little bit he's not moving into negative values he's actually moving down into the 900s rather than moving into negative values so it just gives you again that little bit of contingency if you needed to say for example replace the plate footage with plate footage that was slightly uh, offset and so uh, and so basically meant that there was actually we were actually using some frames that, that that were before the frame that we'd originally set out to use as our first frame okay so that's how the um, that's how the the export system is creating our new script our, our render out and essentially what's happening with the versions is it's just creating these as, as separate render sequences and separate scripts and we should be able to take a look at that by going inside the actual folder itself which I'm just going to do so here we go and we can see this ugliness already starting to take place everywhere that we've created a shot it's creating the shot right in the root of the um, of, of our project, which I don't want to I don't want to do, and it's doing that basically because we've got our path set to shot, and that's right in the project root. So it would make sense for me to move that so that all these shots are being created inside the comps subfolder, which is what I created it for. So all I would need to do in that particular case is I would need to just append the project root by choosing the comps folder, saying open, and now this shot shot 4, shot 5, shot 8, shot 12 subfolder set up with all the with all the subfolders inside they'll all get created and they'll all get tucked away inside this comp and I won't get all these appearing in the, in the root so that's something that I would set up before I start to breaking out any of the uh, any of the comps I'd be doing that so just bear that in mind that this is kind of like a, a process that we would do this is something that we would set up at the beginning of the process before we started to break out the, the scripts okay so, 
I think that is about it. I don't think that I need to go beyond that. Um, the process of breaking out scripts fairly, is fairly self-explanatory. You just have to bear in mind that uh, you know what's uh, what's actually going on in this in this process. We're creating containers. The containers are creating a new script, and they're creating a, a mechanism for outputting a DPX sequence based on what we do inside that comp. And obviously, if we create versions, then it creates versions of each shot. So the shot that I was working on, which was um, was it this one with the versions? Yes, it was shot 10. So if we actually go into that folder now, we should see that we've got. Um, so inside our script, we should have three scripts version 1, version 2, version 3. Inside our renders, we should have three versions. And we can see there that they are being numbered. So you can see the version number being appended and as I come down we should start to see it, this is the version 2 renders so they're not being put in subfolders they're actually being stored in their root folders I could make a change to that in the export settings so again I, if I go back into this um, when it comes to the renders I could actually come into here somewhere and, and create a subfolder uh, set up so that it actually creates a folder for each render uh, all I would need to do is just append that path but that's um, but that's what it's creating anyway. So you can see these are the these are the actual render sequences uh, being stored in there, and annotations and new scripts being being held. And that's the pre comp that we see when we're um, when we're inside here. This is the this is the pre comp that contains an annotations if annotations have been applied at clip level, which we don't have in this particular case. If during the um, during the export settings, um, I'd rather than just reopen that. Rather than choosing the basic new shot with annotations, if I'd just chosen the basic new shot, then it wouldn't create that pre-comp at all. So again, we can switch between. Everything else is exactly the same. You can see that as I jump between those, everything else is exactly the same. The only difference is it's not creating the additional annotations folder. Okay, so hope you found that useful. Hope that you're going to feel able to apply that to your own project.